Okay, we will study something. Uh, we will study on the topic why study the Bible. Why study the Bible? Turn turn your Bibles to the book of Second Timothy, chapter two, verse fifteen. Second <clears throat> Timothy, chapter two, verse fifteen. Today, what we find in most of the churches is today, in order to get people into the church, what people do is. Uh, they uh, they try to have entertainments, okay? Uh, bring this uh, kind of rock concerts and let's have this entertainments, let's have this sports and let's have food and invite everybody and what we'll have is entertainment. So in that way we will be able to have more people in churches today, right? So that is what is happening. So what we do is let's not spend more time in the Bible studying the Bible. Who is going? This is a new generation. The youths do not like. They just want to have music. So let's try to attract the youth by going in a worldly way. That's what people are talking today. So let's not study the Bible. Let's not have Bible study. Uh, you know, you don't have to bring Bible. That's what's happening all over the world. Most of the, in almost ninety uh, percentage of churches all over the world today, cold and lukewarm. Hmm? But what the Bible says in Second Timothy chapter two verse fifteen, the Bible says, "Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth." <laughs> Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you and praise you for this precious uh, evening. As we come in thy presence, O God, in this cottage meeting, we pray that thou will touch our lives. We pray that thou will fill us with thy Holy Spirit. Give, the, give us a receptive heart and an alert mind, O Master, that we may understand what we are going to study today. Father, we pray that you will give us hunger and thirst uh, for thy word, and that we may long... For thy word, O God, as a babe that longs for the milk of the mother. O Father, we pray, make us more, give us more, give us a good appetite to long for thy word, O Master. Help us not to be uh, like uh, the lukewarm churches all over the world, O Master. Even though we are small, help us to love thy word, help us to keep thy word and obey thy word, O Master God. Now we give you all the glory and honor. We submit our lives so that you may speak and we will listen to you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, as I mentioned earlier to you, uh, you won't find the word study in any other version, so called Bibles. Okay? Uh, actually, they are not Bibles. They are just versions, and it's all. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not a word. It's not a Bible that God is preserving. Only in the King James Bible, uh, you will in uh, in the authorized version, you will find in verse uh, in fifteen of Second Timothy the word study. Why we don't find the word study today is because nobody wants to study the Bible, and who does not want you to study the Bible? Satan doesn't want you to study the Bible. Why? Because if you study the Bible, you will know the deep things of God. Amen? Amen? If you study the Bible, you will want to walk according to the word of God. If you study the Bible, your family will be good. Your church will be strong. And your, your children will grow up good. And Satan doesn't want that to happen. He wants to destroy you. And so what he does, he said, oh, this King James Bible, this authorized version is very uh, dangerous. If I give this Bible in the hands of the children of these people, their family is going to be good. Um, their church is going to be strong and their children are going to grow up in a good way. And I don't want that to happen. So what I will do, I will take out that word study and I will put some other words such as do diligently or work hard. And you know, let them do good works, but let them not study the Bible. That is exactly what Satan is telling. Okay? But the Holy Spirit wants you to study the Bible. Amen? Amen. When you study the Bible, what happens? You become like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. Amen? Amen. You are fruitful. Your leaves will not be the... The Bible uses word success only one time. There's only once in the Bible, all over the world, we find the word success once. Where? In the book of Joshua. Turn your Bibles to the book of Joshua and see what happens. Joshua chapter 1. 
That's a beautiful verse. You won't find the word success other places, just once. And if you want success in your life, this is what you must do. Satan doesn't want you to be successful in Christ. He may want you to be successful in your business, in your job. He may want you to have lots of money so that you may live like a donkey or live like a devil, whatever. He doesn't want you uh, to be, uh, you, he doesn't want you to be uh, successful in Christ. He doesn't want you to live a life that pleases Him. Okay, you see what the Bible says in verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein. Day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then amen for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success amen just not a success but thou shalt have what kind of success good success amen, amen. Thou shalt have good success. And how this good success and how this prosperous life will come. When you meditate in the word of God. Amen. Amen. When you will meditate the law of the Lord. When you meditate the word of God day and night. How many times you eat? Three times. How many times you read your Bible? <laughs> okay. We got to be studying our Bible in the morning and in the evening. Amen. And so what happens? The Bible says, Therein. Uh, the Bible says, thou, But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosper, uh, prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Good success comes when you will meditate in the word of God. Good success and prosperous life come when you obey the word of God. Amen. And so here, what we find here, uh, the Bible says, Study. Okay, we have to study the Bible. Uh, now, there's a lot of difference between studying and reading. Okay, just as I said you all, uh, to you earlier, you go chapter by chapter, you go, you just keep reading, you keep reading. But study is you take a particular verse, or you take a particular word, or you take a particular chapter, and you compare with the scripture. And then you come to a conclusion, you study. Now, you, you, if you want to study about how to, uh, like for example, you want to talk about justification. And you, what do you do? You take that word justification and then you start. You, you compare the scripture. You take, you take a concordance and you compare the word. And you, take the, you go to other scriptures where it speaks about justification. And you come to know everything. You study like that. Okay? When you study, what happens? Your spiritual life is charged up. Amen? Amen. Satan doesn't want you to study. That's why he removes that word study from all other versions except in the King James Bible. Because the King James Bible is the word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Why study the Bible? First thing you'll find in verse 15, it is to please God. Why you should study Bible is you should not study the Bible because you want to show yourself as a great preacher or you want to show yourself as a great teacher to the world. You don't have to show it. It's not to show to people how smart you are. That is not the reason why you must study the Bible. If that is the reason, then you will lose a lot. Okay, you will fail. You'll become proud and pride goes before great destruction. Okay, God says, I know the, I, I, what's that? I know the pride, uh, uh, the pride for far off. Okay, God will d pull you down. Okay, and so what the Word of God is saying? Why we must study the Bible? We must study the Bible to please God. We want to please God. When we study the Word of God, what what happened? Um, we are controlled by the Holy Spirit. Our mind is in the right thinking. Okay, we are not filled with all these worldly things that you that where people watch in televisions today. We are not uh, in, we are not uh, um, you know, hoarding up or accumulating all these filthiness of the world that would affect our spiritual life. But when you study the Word of God, you are filling your heart and your mind with what? With the Word of God. And when you're filling your heart and mind with the word of God, what happens? You are pleasing the Lord. You want to obey the word of God. 
The Holy Spirit controls your life. Okay? So we must study the word of God to please the Lord. To please the Lord. Okay? Your desire should be to please the Lord. I want to please the Lord in my daily life. I want to please my Lord daily. I want to please Him in every areas of my life. I want to please Him with my words, with my actions, with my business, with my job, with my education, and with my worship, with my everything. I want to please Him. That is what you ought to think. And that should be your desire to please the Lord. Amen? Amen. And that is one reason why you must study the Bible. Why? Because you want to please the Lord. Study. Okay? Study to show thyself approved unto God. When you study the word of God, you want God to be pleased by your life. God should approve you. Yes. You're doing it good. You are not ashamed. Uh, you are not ashamed of yourself. You are growing in. Uh, you are growing in grace. You are growing in knowledge, and you want. You are willing to. You are able to uh, give an answer to anyone who asks a question. You are not ashamed. Hmm? Second, we will see. Uh, turn to Proverbs, book of Proverbs, chapter two. Why study the Bible? Proverbs chapter two. <coughs> Verse 3 to 5. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 3 to 5 says, Yeah, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Amen. Why study the Bible? We must study the Bible to please God. We must study the Bible to find treasures. Amen. Amen. See what the Bible says in verse 4. If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures. In this, you know, this, this, this Bible is filled, is a mind filled with treasure. Every time you study, God brings out treasures to you, nuggets out of it, deep things of truth, deep things of God. You understand more and more and more and more and then say, wow, I studied today and this is what I found. There are certain, you know, I'll tell you, there's so many times I read the Bible and I didn't understand at that time. But every year, as I'm continuing, okay, every year, as you study, what you didn't, what you read last year, but you didn't understand, this year you read that, and you understand those things. Somebody said, oh brother, I'm worried about, I don't understand the Bible. You know, and then a preacher said, you don't have to worry about what you don't understand, but you must worry about what you understand. Amen? Amen. What you understand, that is what you got to worry about and get yourself right with God and live according to the word of God. Oh, I don't understand. You don't have to understand everything. You read every day. Only what you understand, that you ought to be worried about and get right with God and have that joy of walking with Him. Amen? So what he's saying? We must study the Bible to find treasures. See how you have to study. It says, yeah... If thou criest after knowledge, do you need knowledge? You know, today, today we find about these people. I got the word of knowledge. You know, in, you go into the charismatic. I got this word from the Lord. I got this word, for, uh, word of knowledge. And they say something else, which is not in harmony with the word of God. You know, the word of knowledge and the word of God and the gift of everything is here in this book. Amen? Amen. Amen. Everything is in this book. Don't believe those fellows in the charismatic churches, all those pastors and people. I got a word of knowledge right now when I was praying. No, everything is here in this Bible. And the Bible tells, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as, he, as for hid treasures, what happened? Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord. Amen? Amen. And find the knowledge of God. You see how you get the knowledge of God? When you study the Bible. 
It's not that you stand there, you know. I, you know, when I was uh, a new Christian, don't knew nothing about, and uh, I was I was longing for everything and uh, running around for every charismatic meeting because I thought they are more powerful people. I thought, thought, you know, they're throwing down. I said, they, they have power. And I would go there and I would just cry like others, you know, they were speaking in tongue. I thought, oh no, I don't have, maybe something is wrong with me. Uh, I, was, I, was, uh, I was crying unto the Lord. I need that, I need that, I need that. And there was another person just to put more carrots into my fire. and say, oh, I got the knowledge from God now. And they would say something. The Bible says, if you want to know the knowledge of God, Search the Bible. Amen? Here it is. Yeah. Yeah, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up the voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, you must find the study the Bible as the most precious thing in your life. When you study the Bible as the most precious thing, like a silver, most precious thing. You know what happened? And such as for her as for her treasure. As if oh, something is there I want to. You know, just imagine, just think like this. Um, uh, just think, you have a ring, okay? Your ring in your finger and you were washing your hand with soap and it just slips off and it is gone somewhere. What do you do? You are searching, taking your broom and sweeping everywhere and so you know you take your torch and search, you go under the fridge, you go under the car, you go under the table, you are searching everywhere. And then when you find it, you say, Ah, thank you, Lord. <laughs> that is what God is telling. That is how you must study the Bible. Search it. Because there are deep things, there are deep secrets, the knowledge of God, the word of God, treasure in that. Amen? amen? Does it make sense? Yes. Say amen if it is so. Okay, then. Uh, see John chapter 5. Gospel of John chapter 5. Gospel of John chapter 5, verse 39. Mm, yeah, verse 39. See what Jesus is saying here. Why study the Bible? Because we have to study the Bible to find treasures. Okay? See in verse 39, search the scriptures. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Jesus says, search the scripture. But today's uh, preacher says, hey, don't open the Bible. You don't have to bring your Bible. Okay? Everything is there. You know, you don't have to open your Bible. Jesus says, search the scripture. <laughs> search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Amen. Amen. Treasures in the Bible. When we search the scripture, what we find in the Bible? Eternal life. Eternal life. You know, my friend, when you study the book of Genesis, you find Jesus there. When you study the book of Exodus, you find Jesus there. When you study the book of uh, you know, Judges, you find Jesus there. When you study the book of Ezra, I mean, from all the 66 books of the Bible, from the old to the new, when you study the Bible, you find Jesus there. And you see the plan of salvation. You see eternal life in the Bible. And Jesus, saying, Jesus says, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. Amen. Eternal life. In the, that's why we must study the Bible. We received eternal life when we trusted the Lord Jesus Christ. And now we got to study so that we may be able to share with others. Not just keep with us. Okay. See in Matthew chapter 2. Study the Bible to find treasures. You know, if you have a, a diamond, and if, if you have a diamond in one hand, and if you have a King James Bible in the other hand, and somehow the diamond gets lost, okay, and the King James Bible also gets lost, you should be more worried about your Bible than your diamond. Amen? Yeah. Because your Bible is more precious than the diamond. Amen? Amen. Amen. You see, because in the Bible there are more treasures. In the diamond that is itself a treasure. But the Bible is filled with treasure. Matthew chapter 2 verse 8. 
And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Now, now, when you study this chapter, you know what you find that wise men are come. They are searching for the baby Jesus where he is born and they saw the star. And now they have come to Herod. They have come to Herod and they want to know where is the king of that Jew who is born in Bethlehem. Now this fellow Herod is a wicked fellow. Now, he got jealous. He wants to kill that new king who is the, the, baby, the, the, the king that is born. The king of the Jew. He wants to kill him. Because if he is growing, what happened? Herod is going to fall. And so what Herod does? You see what he does. In verse 7. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. Verse 8. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. You know what they are doing? Who is Jesus? The treasure. Say, you know, Herod is saying, go and search diligently for the young child. S searching him diligently. We have to search the word of God diligently because why? To find treasures in the word of God. Now, there is another verse, you know, where we uh, see that, you know, okay, you see in verse 4, see what he does. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. You know, even the enemies are studying the Bible. They are studying the Bible to destroy it. Okay, they are studying to destroy it. And so what happened? Here we find Herod and all this high priest and scribe. They are studying the Bible there. <laughs> they want to find diligently where the treasure is because they want to destroy it. But we as a Christian, we must search diligently that we may find the treasure in the scripture that we may grow more and more closer to God. Amen? Amen. Therein you will have good success and prosperous life. So, and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Treasure. Jesus is the treasure. Okay? So we have to study the Bible to find the treasures. Now come to the third thing we will see. Why study the Bible? Turn your Bibles to the book of Lamentation. You know where the book of Lamentation is? Just after Revelation. Is it? Okay, maybe after Genesis. Okay, after Jeremiah is your uh, book of... <laughs> Uh, after Jeremiah is the book of Lamentation. I played that trick so that you may remember next time. Lamentation is just after Jeremiah. Okay. Lamentation chapter 3. Lamentation chapter 3 and see in verse 23. I'll read from verse 22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. Verse 23. They are new every morning. Grace, great is thy faithfulness. Amen? Amen. We must search the scripture because we must search the scripture to be fresh. We have to be fresh. We have to be fresh in our conversation, in our, com in our communication. And the word of God says, they are new every morning. You, they are new every morning. You know what you do is sometimes, try like this. You read a chapter. Okay, today you read a chapter. Think about it, study it. Take the same chapter tomorrow and study it again. Take the same chapter the other day, study it again. 
and see if God does not show you more and more and more fresh things in the scripture. Amen? They are new every morning. Hallelujah. So, what happened? We must study the Bible to be fresh. You know, when you are tired, and you go to your bathroom, you go to your shower and have bath, and what do you do? Ah, you feel good. That is how. When you study the Bible, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. That's why we must study the Bible to be fresh. We must be fresh. You know what? Just imagine, okay? Just imagine. I am not studying the If I don't study the Bible, and every Sunday you come to church, every Wednesday you come, every Thursday you come, and I take just one chapter, and I'm not studying my Bible, and over and over again, same thing I'm repeating. You think you'll be blessed with that? No way. You want to hear more and more. You want to hear more uh, new preaching. You want to grow more. You want to know. You want to just uh, don't want. You don't have to see. You don't want to sit there. You want to grow. And so what do you want? Fresh messages. Right? And what is my duty? I have to search them daily. I have to study the Bible daily. And prepare daily. That every Sunday when you come... I, I, de I depend upon the Lord to feed you fresh foods. Amen? Amen. Will you st eat the same rice that you cooked day before yesterday? No, you're not going to do that. You're going to prepare every day. You're going to cook and eat fresh foods, right? Just as we eat fresh food for our physical body, we ought to eat fresh food for our spiritual life. Amen? Amen? So... They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. This is God's promise. Study the Bible to be fresh in your spiritual life. Okay? Now, uh, study the Bible to be interesting in our witnessing. Study the Bible. Okay? To be interesting in our witnessing. T turn to the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah is after Ezra. Now, you'll say, where is Ezra? Ezra is just before after Second Chronicles. Where is Second Chronicles? <laughs> after First Chronicles. Nehemiah chapter eight. Study the Bible to please God. Study the Bible to find fresh uh, to find treasures. Study the Bible to be fresh because they are new every morning. Study the Bible. To be interesting in our witnessing. You know when we are witnessing to people. When we are sharing the gospel to others. We are not supposed to be boring. They say we don't want that boring life. We ought to be interesting. We have to make them understand the gospel thoroughly. We have to make it interesting. I mean the word of God is not a boring book. It's not a dull book. It's the most interesting book. Amen. Amen. It's more, you know, it's, it gives life. The most interesting book. And so when you are sharing the gospel to the people, you have to be, you have to study the, you don't have to put some extra efforts and all this thing. But when you are studying the Bible, you know what? Automatically everything is going to be interesting. Your communication, your conversation is going to be interesting. Because you are studying daily. And you are able to show them through, from the Bible. You are able to make them easy to understand. You are making things interesting. Just like this brother said to us today. He was reading the Bible in the bus. Okay. Another guy came and what happened? He felt guilty. Now that is an interesting thing. Why he, fought, found, why he felt guilty? Because... He saw something interesting. He saw here a Christian reading the Bible. And he is not reading the Bible. He is not walking in the footstep of God. Uh, or whatever his life is. Um, and so he is feeling guilty. Because he is not fresh in his Christian life. I don't know whether he is a Christian or whatever. He hmm? is a Protestant. Okay. But we are Bible believing Christians. Right. So Bible believing Christians will read the Bible. Protestants will, will only keep protesting against everything. Okay, so uh, thank, thank the Lord. So, you know, we have to study the Bible. See, Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 8. So they read in the book, 
in the law of God distinctively, distinctly. Okay? And gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. You see, when we study the Bible, we must study the Bible to be interesting in our conversation, in our preaching, in our teaching, in our witnessing. Okay? Why? So when you study the Bible, what do you mean? You have to read in such a way distinctly. You, the Bible says what? So they read in the book, in the law of God, distinctly, and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. This is exactly that's why we have to study the Bible. That you're able to make others understand. Amen? Amen? If only you will study the Bible, you will be able to make others understand. Only if you get into the Word of God, you will be able to make others understand and give a clear teachings of the Word of God. Amen? Amen. 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 So why study the Bible? Study the Bible to please? The Lord. God to please the Lord. Second, you study the Bible to find Treasure. treasures. Then you study the Bible to be fresh. Treasure. You study the Bible to be interesting in our witnessing. You know what? When you study the Bible daily and you see, you go and witness to people. I'll, t I'll tell you one thing is when you start talking, you will make others think at least. You'll make them think, well, what is this person? He sounds so interesting. He has something to give me. Okay? Study the Bible to share the gospel to people. Study the Bible that you may grow closer to Him. Study the Bible. That's where you'll find eternal life. That's where the treasures are. They are new every morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this precious time. Thank you for your word, O Master. O Lord, we thank you that the word study is still in the King James Bible. We thank you, O God, that you have preserved your inspired word for us. We thank you, God, that you have given this freedom to study the Bible today and every day. O Lord, help us to grow more and more closer to you. Help us, O oh Lord, to know more of you, O oh God, and have the knowledge of God, and that we may able to show to others, O oh Lord, as we open the scriptures to others, that we may able to give them a, a correct sense of God distinctively, O oh God. And, O oh Lord, we pray that all things be done for thy glory, and that we may not study so that we may able to show others how great we are, but to please you, O oh Master, that we may bring glory and honor to thy name, O oh Lord that we may be able to serve you in a more better way and that our lives may be totally committed to thy word and o oh lord that you may you, you may be able to lead us in god that you that we may be able to live a life that pleases you and you alone and o oh lord when people see our life they may want to have the same thing they may want to know you o oh god Help us to walk in that way. Help us to be like a tree that is planted in the rivers of water. Thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. Thank you for speaking to us. We love you very much, O oh Lord. We love you. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Ghost abide with you all now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.